um, pray for Louise Cottrell. She is heading towards England and will pick her mother-in-law and then head home. Uh, she does need our prayer while she's away. So with that, I just want to go back. Uh, time seems to move pretty fast. We've got communion service to follow. But again, folks, again, let me say this to you very clearly. Revelation chapter 9 is a difficult chapter. <clears throat> Great scholars have had a hard time placing this uh, section of scripture. But like I said, I'm from Africa. When we talk about corn, we talk about corn. We don't talk about hush puppies or cornflakes. So when we talk about bananas, we talk about bananas that grows on trees. Not, you know, whatever else we see, you know, in a banana smoothie or whatever. I'm approaching scripture that way. Because I've noticed sometimes we want to help God out. What we don't understand, we want to insert our ideas. And we want to speculate this will be this, this will be this, this will be this, from our understanding. I am just going to let God's word stand on itself. And let God tell us what he wants us to know. All with a simple mindset of preparing our hearts for his coming. The theme has been facing the end times. We see now, we saw the first section of chapter 9. What we did talk about? This creature like locusts. I want you to notice something very interesting. I don't know if any of you picked it up last Sunday. It gave us such amazing description of this creature, didn't it? Hair like a woman, face like a man. Teeth like a lion. Boy, sometimes I don't want to go on the streets at night. You know, and see a creature like that. It stings with his tail, like a scorpion. You wonder what kind of creature is this? Look at the world around us, people. We're telling little boys they can be girls, and girls they can be boys. The men who are dressing up as women and women as men. You will see at the end of this chapter what these people who are being severely punished will still continue in their rebellious ways. You know, somebody said the God of the Bible is so cruel. I mean, you look at what he's going to do to mankind. <laughs> I'm saying you only look at the place where God is sending out his punishment. But have you seen the place where he calls us to himself? Come unto me, all of you that have been and I will give you rest. So, you find the demonic creatures are released to torment the unbelieving world for five months. Revelation chapter 9, verses 1 to 11. A clear description is given about these creatures. But you know what's amazing? Their gender is unknown. Hair like a woman, face like a man. They have intelligence, they have looks. I don't know who the dentists were, but my goodness. Teeth of a lion. But the Bible does not give us the gender of these demonic forces. Take note, people. There is such a move today to change the creative work of God. It's almost like they want to erase what a woman is and erase what a man is. Remember I mentioned about Talib, uh, Talib you know, until I found out what they were all about. For a child, a toy is a toy. Let's leave it as that. But then when you find that there's an agenda behind even toys that make making out of children, it's amazing. <coughs> You see, as this uh, clear description is given about these creatures, the gender is unknown. Now we have another creature that will be released to kill a third of mankind. And yet, this mankind will reject God 
and still continue to worship idols, you say, wow, I am glad I'm not going to be there. <clears throat> Let me ask you, what is your object of worship today? I have to say this without any fear or shame. There are many of us Christians who are involved in the new age without knowing. The enemy has blinded us. And what I hear, you don't understand the benefits I get from this practice. Yeah, I can take you in the heart of Africa. And I can take you to a witch doctor. And he can perform healing on you. You see, the enemy knows how to bring these pseudo healings and all that to capture our mind. So here you find these creatures that's going to come and it's amazing. Today as I see the resurgence of worship of witchcrafts mm -hmm. and sorceries, you know, tarot card, palm readings, you name it, it's out there. And you know what? Many <coughs> of us Christians are attracted to it. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because it gives us an instant answer. You want to know what's going to happen tomorrow? Well, remember they used to have a little write-up about if you were Leo, Virgo, <laughs> whatever you were, and you read your, what is that called? Horoscope. horoscope. <laughs> you know how many Christians are reading horoscopes? Can I ask you why? Because I'll tell you what is happening. It's because you have not indulged yourself in the Word of God to see what God is saying to you and to me. Because if you knew what God was saying, you would not wait for the world to tell you what you're going to be and where you're going. And this is what I found across the board, is how we in the church have played many religious games, but we have not centralized on God's truth. That's why preaching through the book of Revelation, it will make you run or it will make you freeze in your seat. Sometimes people will freeze out of fear. You've got nothing to fear if you know the Lord Jesus Christ. He's your Redeemer. And why would God want to tell us these horrible things? Because He's preparing us to know. So that we don't slacken and sit back. First, um, Revelation chapter 9, verses 12 to 13. The second part, uh, the demonic destroyer released. You see, the last bow... <coughs> brought pain for five months. Do you know that's the duration of how long the locusts do their damage? Five months? Five months. And remember, people would say, we want to die. But they won't die. Isn't it amazing? Do you know that people want to live, but they will do everything to live, and yet they're dying. There'll come a time when God meets up his punishment, people will want to die and not face that pain. And guess what? They will continue to face that pain and not die. So now we come to the second part of Revelation chapter 9. Uh, first, the voice of command to release the angels. And I want you to note whose voice of command it is. It's not men's. Thank God it's not Pierre Trudeau's. Or it's not Biden's. Or it's not uh, the other guy. Zelensky or whatever. Guess what? It is God's voice. Remember on the Mount Sinai when people were gathered there and God showed up. What happened to the people? They trembled. It is awesome. Amazing. Absolutely frightening for ordinary human being in flesh and blood to stand before an awesome mighty God. And the people feared for their lives. They trembled. But can I say to you, when our Jesus came, how did he come? He came as a Lamb of God who takes the sin of the world. And what was the invitation? Come unto me. Come unto me, all you labor and heavy laden. And guess what? He'll, he'll give us rest. Even through troubles on this earth, his promises give us rest. So we see the voice of command to release the angels. Now we read 
Revelation chapter 9 verses 12 and 13. The first war is past. Behold, two wars are still to come. Every time you read about woes in the Bible, take special note. Because that time, sorry for my language, but God is peeved. <laughs> God is peeved. You know, as I read through the book of Revelation, it humbled me. I'll tell you why. It's not that God enjoys punishing mankind because mankind is refused. At every turn, God opens the door and says, come to me. And yet in our stubbornness, he's like a teenager. Once he's graduated, he knows everything. You cannot tell him anything. Until one late night he calls you and says, please come and help me. See, this is where we see verse 13. Then the sixth angel blew his trumpet. And I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar before God. Golden altar before God, before the throne of God? Where do you read about altars? The Old Testament. There was one altar in the Holy of Holies. What was put on that altar? Incense was burned. You know here the picture of the incense that is burning on this altar is worship to God. But remember we are told in chapter 8 not only is the incense, the altar of incense there, but guess what it's going to be mixed with? With the prayers of the saints. Do you know every time you come to God and you pray with a sincere heart, do you know that's part of worship? Do you ever know that your prayer goes up and it is before the throne of God? <clears throat> that's why it is so hard to pray. Have you, have you shut your eyes, close your mind, and say, I'm going to pray. Man, your mind begins to wander. Yes. You can get to London faster than British Airways can get you there. Why? Because the enemy does not want you to pray. We just finished the book of Esther in our small group. When Mordecai, the cousin, comes to Esther and said, we are in deep trouble. Maybe God has put you in the king's palace at a time like this. When Esther realized God made no mistake putting her in that palace, what was her first advice to her uh, cousin? Fast and pray. And I will do the same. <clears throat> Sometimes we in the church want to conquer the world with our own little mind and wisdom. And how successful have we been? We need to come to God as God prescribes us to come to him. So we see the golden altar is before the throne of God. What did they do on the altars? Remember the, in the Old Testament there was an altar where they gave the sacrifice. The cross is just not a symbol of two sticks put together. The cross is really an altar where Jesus Christ went and died for your sin and my sin. But there's another altar before the throne of God. And at that uh, altar, incense is burned, which is a worship to God day and night. And that's where our prayer lands. And in fact, you go back to reading Revelation chapter 8, you can see that for yourself. So we see the sacrifice that took place on the altar stands before God. The four horns on the altar. Do you know what horns meant in the Old Testament? Power. Meant strength and power. In fact, the psalmist cries out, they have lifted up their horn against me. Means they have lifted up their power against me. So horns here indicate power. The four majestic powers. The four altars, uh, the four horns on the altar. And on that altar, guess what? It's of a similar design of the altar of incense used in the tabernacle and in the temple. If the horns have significance, they refer to the sovereignty and judicial government of God. All power is given to me. Where? Where? 
Who said that? Jesus Christ, after his resurrection. Did he tell his disciples, all power is given to me, where? In heaven. All power, not some power. But you see, when we are really beat up, we run to Jesus. When things are good, we run away from him. And yet he says, all power has been given to him. If all power has been given to him, why are you afraid of the little circumstances you face in this life? Why not entrust him? Didn't he prove by resurrection? Didn't he prove by calling Lazarus who had been dead for a few days? So who is there who can destroy you? I love Romans 8, what Paul says. No power of death can even separate us from the love of God. So here you see, there's a voice, not only the golden altar that stands before, but we see a voice from the four golden horns of the altar speaks. It's not just a dead piece of furniture of their people. It's a living thing that speaks and out of it a voice comes. And isn't it amazing? It says, the altar, <coughs> you see the sixth angel of Britain and I had a voice from the four horns of the golden altar before God. A voice that comes out. And it's amazing. You see, you see, the altar has always been a place for men to have a substitute to take its place. Sacrifice. That's what it was in the Old Testament. They brought the animal for the priest to sacrifice. The animal was sacrificed and the blood was sprinkled on the altar. Just like Christ came and he went on the altar, the cross, for your sin, for my sin. See, God has prepared mankind for a long time to come near to him. Praise God when you and I have. So we go to Revelation chapter 8 verse 3. This altar was the scene of offering of the incense with the prayers of the saints. Verse 3 of Revelation chapter 8. And another angel came and stood at the altar with a golden censer. And he was given much incense to offer with the prayer of all the saints. Rose before um, prayer of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. And verse 4 of Revelation chapter 8 says, And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints rose before God from the hand of the angel. God never forgets even those desperate uh, prayers you have had in the middle of the night and said, Oh God, He has heard those prayers. And God gives us a picture where those prayers have landed. Sometimes I wonder when I pray to God, God, it'd be all right if I won the lottery ticket, you know, the 649 or whatever they call it. You know how much help I can be to the church? I'm glad those prayers fall very short. I want you to note the battle is between the forces of God and the forces of Satan. Refer to, remember in Ephesians 6, 12, Paul says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. I'm just going to go to the next point and then we're going to leave it there and continue and finish this message next week. Revelation chapter 9 verse 14. The angels released to kill third of mankind. You can sit there and say, how cruel, how unfair. But I want you to note, he came, he died, he rose again, and he called. The angels released to kill a third of mankind. People, I, I, are there about a billion people on earth now? In fact, it's over a billion now. And yet, from this section, a third, remember half has already been taken down, another third, a quarter has been taken down, and another third will be taken. Almost half of the world is going to perish at this time. 
Revelation chapter 9 verse 14, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. Now angels bound, now that kind of alerted my uh, curiosity, uh, why would these angels be bound? God's angels are never bound. <coughs> but remember, in Revelation chapter 7, these four angels are not the same ones that are the four angels that are coming from the four corners of the earth. These angels were bound. The only angels that are bound are those that have rebelled against God. So, you know, Oprah Winfrey can have all her angels, but they're not angels of God, because I'll tell you, angel of God is very different. Who are these angels? Well, these angelic ministers are under divine control. They cannot act without express command. Remember the locust? Where did they come from? From the abyss. Who released them? The star. That star is referring to Satan. Even Satan has to take his cue from God. Thank God for that. Sometimes we give too much prominence to the enemy without realizing that God has got all power. Remember when Jesus was on the cross? What is the last word he said? I can't hear you folks. It is finished. It is finished. What was finished? His torment? What was finished? His accomplishment? No. When Jesus cries out, it is finished. He meant the power of sin and Satan was broken. And that's how you and I can be released from the power of the enemy. And when the power of the enemy has been released, we have an opening to go and be with God for eternity. Sometimes we just need to look at what scripture is saying to us and just meditate and let God's spirit just open his truth to us. You see now, but these angelic beings have been bound. Now some people said they are the same angels that were mentioned in Revelation chapter 7 verses 1 and 2. I'm going to read that portion of scripture because I want you to make the difference. These angels in Revelation chapter 9 were bound at the, river, at the great river Euphrates. Now you know that's where Iran, Iraq and all those places are. Revelation chapter 7 verse 1. After this I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth holding back the four winds of the earth so that no wind might blow on earth or sea or against any tree. Verse 2. Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the earth and the sea. You see, there is God's angelic beings. Who run the affairs of God. And then there are angelic beings. Who rebelled against God. These four bound I think they rebelled against God. And they have been kept. At a, at a place for a time. For a moment. And they will only be released at God's command. Revelation chapter 9 verse 15. So the four angels who have been prepared. For the hour, the day, the month, the year. Were released to kill a third of mankind. <laughs> it seems that these angels. Are not symbolic. And the river is also literal to me. Remember the four empires. Let me just remind you historically. Remember the four empires? The Babylonian, the Medio Persia, the Grecian Empire, and the Roman Empire. Do you see all these empires came and beat on God's people? Where are they today? Where are they today? So you see, God is doing a great thing. And he's doing it in the midst of your life and my life. He is telling us in advance what is coming. It's like a warning. Recently we had fire out in St. Andrews and fire out in North Scotia. My brother-in-law was a fire chief and we talked to him because it seemed it was very close to where he was. Guess what people? There was somebody who said, we were so helpless. We could not even save our pets. There was just a fire in different locales. 
when God begins to mete out his justice, it will be a worldwide phenomenon, people. So here we see, but there is a time and a place, and only God has the ultimate power to release these four angels who have been bound. Now some people said, well, maybe that's going to be the warfare with the nuclear powers and all this thing. If God needed help from men to bring justice on earth, then I'll tell you, he's a limited God. I don't think so. God is going to say, uh, Putin, can you give me a few of your nuclear warheads? Or Biden, can you give me a few of your nuclear warheads? I don't think so. God is going to use men's resources. Because that will tell me he's a little bankrupt. I'll tell you what, read about the creatures that is now coming. And it is amazing to think that these creatures, as we read the four angels were prepared for the hour, for the day, the month, and the year, were released to kill a third of mankind. And like I said, as you continue to read, you will notice a very interesting description is given of this creature. Head like a, it's like a horse, but got a head of a lion. Head of a lion. They sting with their tails. What kind of creature is this? Even Captain Kirk couldn't come up. Remember the Star Wars and the silicone creatures they used to make? I'll tell you what. God is saying, because you've tried to change my creation. Now I will send you the demonic forces that you worship. And they are the ones who are going to bring destruction to you. I love what Jude says, and I will finish with this. Jude chapter 1, verse 6. Well, there's only one chapter in Jude. <laughs> <laughs> verse 6. Jude writes... And the angels who did not stay within their own position of authority, but left their proper dwelling, but left their proper dwelling, has he has kept in eternal chains under the gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day. These four angels are loose to carry out God's command precisely as God's wants, time and place. I want you to notice the power and the complete control God has over everything. Though the agency of man is used to accomplish the purpose of God, the time schedule is determined by God, not man. Even angels will execute God's will in God's time. This is yet one of the most devastating judgment on the unbelieving mankind. Remember in the earlier, the fourth seal, the fourth of mankind is killed, here a third is marked for destruction and almost half of humanity is destroyed. Yet they refuse to repent. And that brings us to a great dilemma. You will say to me, Pastor, my husband, my son, my daughter, my friends, my family do not know the Lord. What can I do? I'll tell you what you can do. Remember the little song that if you were in Sunday school used to sing, This Little Light of Mine? I will do what? Let it, let it shine. Let the Christ in your life come out and let him shine through your life. They will see. And when devastation comes, I know God's Spirit will bring to their remembrance. Because today, remember I said to you, we are a small part of the retaining wall that's holding back the powers of darkness. And this is why don't lose your place. God has put you in this place at this time, at this moment for a particular reason, just like he kept those angels bound. But the moment you and I skip out of that place where he has put us, we bring weakness in this retaining wall. Is it easy? No. But guess what? He's the conqueror. He has all the power. Guess what? I'm going to take my place and be ready. Because when he removes us, the Bible says, when he removes the restrainer, 
and because of children I don't want to use this word but everything will break out then what this is the day the Lord has made and I will do what rejoice and be what glad in it people I don't know when you're going to buy your ticket Christ is the ticket master come to him make your peace with him and begin to live and walk in his ways and become a part of the retaining wall until the day he takes us out of his place but until then you and I have some very heavy lugging to do father we thank you for your grace we thank you for your mercy forgive us we are creatures of time and father our mind is also limited we can only take so much these words are heavy Father, we do not want to see a third of mankind destroyed. But Father, as we know from your word, men will continue in his rebellious ways. Give us the grace to stand firm. Father, when the temptation comes for us to follow the paths of this world, let your grace hold us. As we say, he holds me fast. Lord, I just pray you will hold each one of us in your loving arms until the day we are taken out of this place but until then lord let your light shine in and through us let the world see christ in me the hope of glory thank you for your goodness your mercy and your love in jesus name we pray amen, amen.